Okay, welcome everyone to another processing video. Um, I, I discovered for myself um, a couple of um, tweaks I could make to improve, um, I suppose, the colour balance in my SHO or Hubble palette images. Um, and when I was working on the recent two panel mosaic of the banana and whirling dervish nebulae, um, so, um, I thought I would do, after a couple of people were interested in seeing some more processing videos, I thought I would do a short one on this, um, and, um, share what I learned. So, um, over here on the left, we've got a HA panel, an OII I panel, and a SII panel of Nebula only. So each of these... Um, in the linear phase, had their backgrounds extracted. Um, they were um, aligned to each other and cropped the same. Um, and then, because I have to to remove the stars, they had they each had a masked stretch. Um, they were duplicated. Stars removed in the duplicates. Then the the duplicates were subtracted from the originals in pixel math to get the stars out. Um, and Finally, um, they were linear fit, HA and oxygen were linear fit to sulfur because I've, I've learned through experience that that's one, the, an important early step in bringing out the reds um, in my SHO images. Um, so just to show you that, what we have on the right is, um, is the panels combined with no linear fit and on the left, the panels combined in the way I usually do with a linear fit to sulfur. So you can see straight away that the reds are more prominent, straight off the bat, and the greens are more subdued. Um, and actually, there's less dynamic range in the linear fit um, com combination, but there's a better colour balance, in my opinion. Um, and the reason there's less dynamic range is because the HA was dulled down, so to speak. Um, but you can recover that with curved stretching. Um, so I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I'm more interested in trying to get try to get color balance early-ish on in the process before lots of stretching. Um, because then when what you're stretching is uh, the, is the color balance that you that's closer to what you want to end up with. So, um, The only other thing I've done here is a bit of a histogram gram transformation to um, make it how I like it. Um, centred on this first line, I'm clipping just a little bit, not too worried about that. Um, and it's it's about as broad as I can get it. And also all the channels are sort of fairly balanced. So that's my usually what I do after first combination. Now, um, looking at this... I can sort of see, again, if I bring up the comparison with no linear fit, comparing the two, you can see a little bit more um, of the red showing up, reds and golds, already, just by linear fitting. But it's still really green. Now, you could just SCNR it um, and remove the green, but removing the green doesn't introduce um, colour. Color. It might reveal a bit of a bit of colour, but in my experience, it doesn't um, bring it up enough. So, before I SCNR it, I like to bring up the curves transformation tool, and again, it's in processes, all processes, curves transformation. Um, and I'll reset this. So usually we use curves. I'll bring up a preview so that we can see in real time what we're doing. Um, we're all familiar with using curves like this, giving it a bit of an astro curve and then introducing a bit of contrast. Um, and certainly I do loads of those. Um, but that is, again, working with what's there. You can sort of see the beginnings of the colour 
balance that we want. Reds and a little bit of red and orange and gold in here and a little bit of aqua there, but overall it's still really green. Um, so before we do that, we're going to move over to this hue, or um, well, the other thing we use curves for before we get into that is saturation. So we all, I find I don't often need to deal with saturation like this after curve stretching. It, it's, the images are usually saturated enough. Um, if you've done the histogram right and with the other curves, just RGBK curves stretching. So, but that's there and we, we know it's there. But this video is really about this hue, curves hue tool. So we've got here uh, the spectrum of colors along the X and um, the X and Y axes. And by dragging this line around in various shapes, you can change the color balance that you're achieving, sometimes in bad ways. Um, and um, it's a really powerful tool. Um, I really recommend you, have, if you don't already, having a play with it, um, with your images, um, because it can, it can really change things up. So the first thing that I typically do with all SHO or Hubble palette images is, that looks okay, but I really want the reds to come out a bit more. So, um, it's quite simple. Um, a single anchor point here, and then make a change by dragging the line down to here and you, you can see oranges and golds are appearing um, that used to be a lot greener um, and um, in this case it's made the banana nebula purple so it's really easy to reproduce I'll reset that a, a click around about there to hold that there and then you just drag this part of the line down and what that's doing is grabbing the greens greens over here and bringing them more into golds and also bringing some of the golds and oranges down into the red zone. But it's also bringing up um, blues up into purples and reds, which is why the banana's gone purple. But I'm not too worried about that at the moment. And in fact, and I'll just apply that, and in fact, because um, I quite like purple, I was just going to leave leave things where they were um, but you know I got to thinking I'm always trying to learn um, I kept hearing about how um, the greens you see in a Hubble palette image are really closer to aqua and I thought well I wonder if I can use the hue the curves hue tool to bring those greens closer to aqua um, so I ended up with this so I've got a couple of anchor points up here to hold the pinks, purples in place. Um, and again, oranges, yellows, reds, I wanted to stay where they were, but it's the green I sort of wanted to work on. So I've, the line that used to be along here, I've pulled up towards aqua and blue. And um, you can see, if you compare these two images, quite a marked difference. Um, it's almost bicolor, but there's a little bit of green remaining that, to my eyes, looks sort of aqua. So I thought, well, that's that's working for me. Um, I'll apply it again. Banana stayed purple because we didn't shift really any of those hues, um, and um, so I'll apply that. I was going to show this video just on the banana panel, but it wouldn't have shown these first two um, curves hue changes very well um, because you know all it's done is made the banana purple and kept it there. A little bit of changes out here in the faint stuff, um, but nowhere near the marked difference that you can see up here. And if you look incidentally at this preview now, I've applied that curves hue alteration to this image. And this preview is now showing the same alteration applied again um, on that altered image. And, and it gets it to being close to bicolor, which um, lots of people like. See a lot of Hubble palette images that are bicolor, but I prefer um, 
a bit more gradation. And the other thing I've noticed, if you use this tool too much, the drop-offs between hues become too sharp um, and it, it almost introduces noise to your image or what I, I th put it in the same category as posterization. So I'll, I'm only doing that once. All right, so we've sorted out the whirling dervish. That's looking pretty close to where I want it. And I know when I go, f go, go ahead and do further curves stretching on RGBK that I can bring up some more contrast and definition. And to be honest, I was going to leave the banana like this because I don't mind purple. But I thought, no, um, in the first time I did an SHO on the banana, it was blue and I, I didn't mind that. And that's probably more traditional. So I wonder if I can get it back there. And I came up with this. And you can see that the whirling dervish remains fairly untouched, which is good. I was quite happy with that. Um, I really wanted to try and shift some of the purples in the banana to blue. And I think by holding most of this line where it was and not changing any of the hue there, just grabbing just this purple line and sort of dragging it down into the blues, I think, I think I'm a lot happier with that. If I perhaps try and get a bit more of the purple just for a little bit of extra contrast so we're working with what's really there the red the reds that are showing up down here in the banana are a different emission line to the blues um, the blues would be largely oxygen um, and the reds I'm thinking would be a combination in, in here of, of HA and um, sulfur based on how I combine the channels and um, I think that's looking okay we haven't made too many alterations up here um, but we've worked on the banana there so I'll apply that okay so if we have a look at our this is a copy I made of of the same same combination um, with the same histogram um, alterations made before um, any of the curves hue adjustments. So we've been able to bring out a bit of contrast um, between the red and blue here in the banana whilst maintaining an overall sort of blue look to it rather than purple and I'm happy with that. If we move up and look at this out of faint nebulosity, heavily green over here, um, and remember this was the linear fit version to sulfur whereas if we look over here there's a lot more color variation so we can appreciate a lot more variation in in terms of what we're looking at um, and and obviously the whirling dervish nebula up here um, is greatly improved in my opinion now if we just do an SCNR SCNR green um, on this straightforward SHO combination sure with with linear fit to sulfur to bring the reds up I'll just remove and I usually don't remove all the green um, I'll just remove 75 0.75 and I'll put that on there and we'll see how it compares Okay, so maybe, maybe with a bit of saturation, you might be able to get closer um, to the image that we worked on. Let's have a look, just for sake of the argument. We'll bring up the saturation, certainly electrifying. We'll, we'll really ramp it up just to see, particularly in the, in the dervish, whether we can get it there. Okay. So I can see issues straight away um, with having done it this way. Let's have a look. Close the preview. 
All right, so the issues I see straight away is this is sort of an electric magenta, whereas it's a bit more subdued here. And maybe when I go through and do some curve stretching, um, I'll still have that issue, but I could always mask it, I suppose. The, the whirling dervish looks all right. It looks okay. It's not too bad. Obviously, we've hypersaturated this image. This through here, again, it looks okay. It's not too green. The color balance is all right. And the banana looks positively electric purple um, because we've just applied a saturation across everything. Um, so overall, you could... Um, the other thing I notice, obviously, is the background. And, and yes, I could mask the background out and, and work on this separately and sort of try not to do that. But the, the background has come up as well. Whereas on this version here, without any saturation increase, um, already looks pretty well colour balanced to me. So, yeah, you could achieve a similar result just by using SCNR and then boosting saturation, but I don't... I still don't think the contrast is there um, down here in the banana, and it is quite purple. So um, let's have a look then just quickly at doing a similar thing on the SHO. So you can see with the same saturation applied, it's, I mean, um, lots of people might like that. It's a little bit too, too far even for me. Um, if I back it off, yeah, a little bit of improvement. Often I will saturate a bit if I'm going to do it, particularly colour saturation, um, uh, before I sort of do final stretches. Again, because when I'm stretching, I want to sort of be stretching the relative um, colour balance that I'm looking to end up with. Um, colour saturation is another one of those excellent tools. And... What I've got here is really ramp, ramp, trying to ramp up the reds. I might back that off just a bit because it's a little bit intense. Um, you can see that that's really isolating those reds and pinks in the banana. And it's also grabbing this sulfur halo here for me, which is helpful. Again, more careful processing and I'd be masking a lot of that stuff out. So... Um, this is a tool I use a lot as well to isolate particular colours and, and try to boost them up a bit. You can see in this example it's also grabbing some of this gold and orange up here and lifting it up a bit too. Um, and from there, from this um, result, I would sort of go through, obviously, lots of masking, um, more curve stretching, so masking not to blow things out, curve stretching to add definition. Um, I'd also be doing some more denoising, etc, etc. But you can see that we're getting um, quite a radical looking image um, that has impact and also lets us really appreciate just the amount of action that's happening in this um, region of space. So thank you very much for watching. I hope um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it might have um, offered you some new information or given you some thoughts of things to try on your own images. And if if that's the case, I'm I'm really happy. Um, let me know if you'd like to see more um, processing videos of specific processes. Um, drop a comment under this video um, or find me on Instagram at sa underscore astro under southern skies. Thanks for watching and see you next time.